let me show you how to design a form in PowerPoint. Hey, it's Arit here from Esatino Media, and on this channel, we show you how to create profitable content. If you're wanting to turn your Word document, something that looks like this with a bunch of text, into something that looks more like this, more professional with your logo, with your colors, with your branding. This video will take you through the structure of how to design a form so you can apply this to any form that you're creating. Let's get started. So the first thing you wanna do is open up a new file in PowerPoint. Now I already have the form opened here, but I'll walk you through the steps of how we got here. So once you've opened it up, you want to set the canvas, or in this case it's called a slide, to the right size. And typically a letter size paper works. So what we're gonna do is go to the design tab, slide size, custom slide size, and here is where you would choose what type of paper you want this to be on. So most of the time it's letter. In this case, I had to choose A4 because that would that's what the client specifically requested. But once you've chosen that, you'll also want to indicate whether it's portrait or landscape that you're designing in and then click OK. Now you might get another dialog box popping up saying, do you want to fit the, the slide to the size of the paper or maximize the content? It doesn't matter which one you choose because your slide is blank. So just hit OK again. That will get you started with the first page of your form. Next, what we're going to do is design the header and the footer of the form. And I like to do this first because it frames the page and that allows me to figure out what size text needs to go in between to be able to fit the content of my form. So in this case, I added a bar, which was in a specific color that came from this client's brand palette. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to insert shape and then this box or rectangle up here, or it's also it can be found over here. And once you click on that, you can click and drag across the page from end to end and just fit it to the size of your page and go to shape fill and choose, the, choose a color from your brand palette. So if none of these work, you can go to more fill colors and type in the exact hex code or you can click and drag this to find the right color that suits for you. Um, you can make it lighter or darker. And you can also decide to have a shape outline. In this case, we chose no outline so that it just looks clean like that. And you're gonna click and drag this to the top. So this is what we did here. And it's like a very light gray beige. And I did the same thing. I created, I inserted another rectangle in a different color, a contrasting color. So in this case, you'll see I chose like a dark, uh, it's almost like a navy blue, really super dark, midnight blue. And that is what is the element behind the title of the form. So the title will go on the left-hand side and your logo can go on the right-hand side or you can switch it around too, that's fine. To insert the text and the logo, how do we do that? So when you double click into the rectangle, you can start to type the title of your form and you can then go and customize the font and the size from up here. And just play around, see what looks good. I'm using Arial and uh, 18 size font for the top, which is just a regular plain bold font that we needed for this client's form. And off to the side here is a logo. Now they had two particular logos because they're in partnership with NDIS, but the way to, uh, you're likely just bringing in a single logo image. And the way to do that is going to insert pictures, this device, and then you're going to find the logo image on your, on your computer, wherever folder that lies in, and then double click on it to open it up. And it's gonna bring the logo in for you and all you need to do is just click on the logo and then play with these external white circles to just size it and then click and drag to move it into place. Now, one note about this, what happens if the image ends up being underneath this rectangle over here? So in order to adjust the positioning of, of certain elements, like even for this, when you're bringing in another rectangle on top, you want it to be on top, right? So you just need to go to 
shape format and you'll see here where it says bring forward send backward so you can just click on that or you can even go bring to front which brings it all the way up to the front which is what we need in this case and same with the logo image so picture format come over here bring to front and you'll have that sitting on top of the rectangle now what happens in the footer so what i like to do again is grab a rectangle shape so remember how to do that insert shape and then the rectangle shape which can be found either here if you've recently used it or here and then when you click on that click to drag right you choose your colors and everything as well move it into place so this is going to be right at the bottom of your form and if you have like a smaller version of your logo or a favicon which is just a symbol of your logo like in this case here you want to insert that as well so bring in insert picture bring in that logo put it on top and then what i typically do for the footer is just do a copyright all rights reserved kind of message with the company name and some contact information just in case they have questions about filling out the form so to insert that text You'll notice here the text is a separate element from the rectangle. So I didn't double click into the rectangle in this case to add the text. What I did was go to insert text box and then I clicked and dragged the box size of box that I wanted. And then I started typing in, right? Um, and then I moved it into place, made it super small, like you see here which is what's needed for footer text, right? We're gonna make it small and also adjusted the color. So you could do that from over here so that it stands out nicely and contrasts with that rectangle. So once you have your page framed, now you need to input what's in the middle, right? And that's the body of the content. It's usually for a form, a client form, it's going to be text, maybe bullet points or numbers, maybe uh, a table even. In this case, this form doesn't have a table. And of course, fields, wherever we want them to fill out. So this form has just a couple fields, but a lot of check boxes. And when you do create those fields, it's important to outline them so that it's clear, uh, it stands out, it's clear where you want the client to fill out and also make them a different color from the rest of the form. Like you can see here, the fields are all this like light blue color, which is kind of a universal field color. And for the most part, all of the fields are outlined with this purple color, which is another color from their logo palette, right? So how do we do this? So let's go up here to the top. You'll notice here, I put another rectangle behind this starter text. And this text, this area of the form is usually the instructions for the client or whoever's filling out your form. It's what the form is about. It's a little description. It's instructions on how to fill it out. And we wanted to separate that section from the content of the form itself. So again, to create this same thing, you're going to go insert shape rectangle you're going to bring you're going to click and drag across the page and make sure it is positioned where you want it to no outline perhaps just click on no outline you can select whatever color you like another way to adjust the positioning of the elements is by right clicking so instead of going up here and doing it through shape format you can right click and then go send to back and it's going to send it directly behind on that form this text element is again the same thing where you're going insert text box and then you're clicking and dragging wherever you're going to position that text and then start typing away or paste in your text and you see here i have bullet points you can do bullet points you can do numbers and i it's just using these elements over here so whenever you have bullets, just click on the bullet and then you can start typing away your first bullet point. When you hit enter, it's going to add a second bullet, etc. And so a lot of these other areas that you see here on the form is me inputting text, uh, text boxes like I showed you or creating the rectangles for the fields or creating the boxes. So for the fields, it's the same thing. It's just a shape. So insert shape and then rectangle for these longer fields and by the way if you prefer 
a line instead of a box of a field like this, you can also do that. So you can click on line and then just, you know, make a line go across, for example, and you can click and drag that. Oops. You can make it make sure it's horizontal and you can adjust the thickness and the color of the line so you can go to shape outline uh, let's just say we want it black and we want it to to adjust the weight which makes it thicker or thinner depending on what you need so i like to go about one and a half and if you feel that's too thick you can go one point but you can use the lines I'm just going to move that out of the way so you can see what it looks like. You can do the lines rather than the fields if you prefer. Now let me show you how to do these boxes. For here it's again the same thing with the shape. Uh, I don't particularly choose like a square or anything. Again I'll just choose a rectangle. But if I want to make sure that it is a box because we want a box is essentially same height same width. So we can go over here to where you see the length of the height and the width. So if I want a box, I know I'm going to maybe want it 6.6 .6, and then I'll do again, I'll just match the width to have it be a box. And again, if you want it to be smaller, you can do smaller. You could go 0.5 by 0.5. Again, you would adjust the, the fill the color inside of the box and then adjust the outline. You can adjust the thickness of the outline as well as I showed you here. And then that's how you create your box and you can drag it into place. So you'll start to notice a lot of what I'm showing you here on the form is pretty much the same thing. Like if you master the, the foundation of bringing in a text element, bringing in a rectangle element, and you know customizing the rectangle elements with the outlines and that sort of thing you've pretty much nailed the foundations of creating a form and it's just a matter of you customizing and moving those elements into place uh, for the circles here so you see here how i numbered certain things again it's a shape insert shape you'd go to the circle and then what you would do is click and drag and if you want it to not be an oval you'd come over here to the side and adjust to make sure it's uh, equal you change the color and then you would bring in a text element and put the number one or number two on top of that circle and that's how this was created over here now if you have an important section on your form that you want to highlight like this area over here you can highlight it with a a color a light color um, and I just use the same color that we used up here for the header so that it's easy to see because you also want to be mindful of when you're printing out the form you want to be able to easily see the text after it's printed if you have a dark color here uh, that doesn't really contrast with the text and it's going to be hard to see when your client prints it out so just keep that in mind have a super light color behind the dark text and again, same thing, this was all done with just inserting and customizing the rectangles. Now this, is, this here is a little bit different. So if you have a signature area on your form, uh, there's different ways that you can kind of mark where, where to sign. And this is a unique shape that can be found under shapes. So it's under block arrows. And it's this one right here. So it's kind of like a little tab. Um, that you know when you click on it it's kind of like to indicate importance to a certain area so i just clicked and dragged that shape and i customized it with the color that i wanted and you can even adjust the way that it looks by you see this yellow circle so i'm just going to zoom in this yellow circle kind of adjusts how pointy you want the shape to be uh, and i'm just clicking and dragging it there and by the way, this is how you zoom in and out. If you're, if it's a little bit hard to kind of work from a zoomed out space, you can just click and drag this area on the top to just get really nice and close and you can design it how you like. And what I like to do from time to time as I'm designing is just click on this presentation mode 
to see everything at once and make sure it looks good as a whole on the page. And then to come out of this, I just hit escape on my keyboard and, uh, and then it comes back out into the design mode. So what you wanna do after you finish designing your form is make sure you save this PowerPoint file. So you're gonna do file, save as, and then choose a space on your laptop or computer, desktop computer, and make sure it says PowerPoint presentation and you're gonna hit save. That is your editable file. So if you need to make any changes later down the road, you can always open up that file, make your changes, and then resave. But what about the version for the client? So the version that you're gonna to send to the client is a PDF. So the first save is a PowerPoint file save, but then you wanna do it again, go to file, save as, and then instead of the PowerPoint presentation here, you're gonna click here where it says save as type and then select PDF. So it's gonna save it as a PDF and you can indicate whether to have the file opened after publishing, which I usually do so that I can see what it looks like. So I'll just hit save now to show you. It's gonna say replace it. I didn't, uh, yeah, we're, we're good. It's pretty much the same form here. It's gonna open it up and then show it to you in a PDF format, which I recommend always review this because this is the version that's going to the client. So just make sure everything looks good as it should. And then this is what you can send over to your client, your partner, whoever is about to fill out your form. So that's how you design a client form in PowerPoint. Let me know if this has been helpful by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you do need some extra help, or if you just want someone to take this design form project off your plate, I'm happy to help. I'll include my email address down in the description below and you can reach out and we can see if we'd be a good fit. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.